Hello everyone, it's Chris from Winterfillip here. Hope you're all doing well in these strange days that we're living in currently. So I wanted to make a video based on a, an Instagram and Facebook post that I put out the other day just talking about if there's any um, particular Winterfillip songs people would like to learn or if there's any kind of burning questions that people had that were interested in that, that maybe we could answer and kind of do some video stuff in these, as I say, strange times that we're living in. You know, most of us on lockdown as I am here and as many of you probably will be around the world. So, um, so yeah, there was, there was a few interesting questions come in, so I wanted to kind of answer a few of those, and, and, and quite a lot of them were kind of about technique, and about, you know, how, how I hold the pick, and how we kind of formulate our chords, and how we, um, how we write songs, and I suppose a point to mention, you know, and, and lots of people have kind of sent me over the years videos of them kind of doing covers of our songs, and obviously we're, we're really grateful of people kind of taking the time to do that, but equally, I, I'm always kind of interested to see that, that that people kind of always get it wrong, and and not in a bad way, but I think that kind of brings me to the sort of first point about what what Winterfell tune like and, and kind of how we play the guitar, and maybe that's what people have been missing perhaps when they've been doing these covers. And um, yeah, I think that'd be an interesting thing for people to know about the sort of tuning and and how we do things. So so when it comes to the guitar playing, um, most of the time I think most most black metal bands play in E standard, so the kind of, I guess, normal, regular tuning that you'd have. And the main thing about Winterfellith, which is different from that, is that we don't ever play in that tuning. Um, it's kind of a hangover from um, from the band that Simon and I were in beforehand, which is this band Atavist, which is um, an old band of ours that, funny enough, I've recently resurrected and we're doing a new album with, but I'll come back to that anyway. Um, the, the point being that we, we were playing that band for a long time, and we used to tune to, to A. And so we, when we kind of first started doing Winter for the songs, we kind of do that at the end of activist practices, or we kind of do that, you know, if the singer couldn't make it, or, or, or something kind of happened that meant not everybody could be there. And, and actually that's kind of how we ended up sort of starting writing Winter for the material. But as a, I guess as a result of playing in, in a Doom band, we, um, we kind of kept that tuning. So. One thing that people always miss when they're trying to, to work out and do tutorial videos or, or kind of play ones for the songs is that they always get the tuning wrong. And, um, and so I thought people may be interested in, in what kind of tuning we play. So, um, so we have kind of custom guitars. So we, um, we use these comparison guitars that, uh, that we have an endorsement with. Uh, they're great guitars. They're made in Japan, although they're owned by a guy from, from Wales, interestingly. Um, they... Well, this one particularly was made specifically for me so that it, it, it can kind of take the um, the kind of fat strings that we use. So I use these strings actually for anyone that's interested. So the, um, see that? EXL 157 Daddario string. So they're quite um, quite fat in terms of the, um, the gauges that they use. So they start at 68 and go down to 14, which is I think technically a sort of baritone guitar set of strings. Which, um, which obviously means that they can hold the tension in those lower tunings and that they would be a lot more kind of responsive to kind of chords in those lower tunings and, and all that kind of thing. So the way we play the guitar is that we either play in, um, in drop A, which is essentially like drop D on a normal guitar, but, but rooted in A rather than D, or B standard, which is again like the normal kind of E standard tuning, but the lowest note is B. So um it's on, on this guitar currently it's um a e a d f sharp b and so um that's the kind of as i say they kind of drop the equivalent but in a and so w when you do that you kind of get these kind of really resonant chords like you get the low note you also get the kind of ring off i think when people have been learning with for the songs and trying to work out when they the songs they've always got it wrong I think the reason for that is that when you play from the kind of second string downwards, or the, or the fifth string technically, it's kind of an E, a normal sort of E tuned guitar from there downwards, but the B, the B note is the, or the A note in this instance, is the low, low, no, low note that people often miss. And um, so when it comes to playing specific chords uh, or specific songs, you know, people tend to get that wrong. So a song like End Signs of Victory, for example, which is, I think, probably one of my most listened to songs. Um, particularly on Spotify and places like that, 
people always kind of get that wrong. I've seen a few videos of people trying to do that on YouTube, and um, and fair enough, you know, they're, they're kind of close, but they've obviously missed the fact that it's quite low tuning. So, it's so when they're playing those songs, obviously the, the kind of first and second riff are, are kind of are fairly straightforward. So you've got a riff like uh, the first riff, which is, um, you know, And that kind of works in E because it, it doesn't go onto the low string, and um, and so you, you can kind of get away with that even if you're in the wrong tuning. You can figure it out. So you know. So that's, that's the first riff, um, and that's kind of that, that works. That's in E, uh, but. When it gets onto the sort of second and third riff, people kind of struggle, and, and you sort of hear some crazy notes that people are putting in there. And, and actually, if you knew that it was just tuned to A, you could probably work it out and just kind of use this root note structure that we use. So, when it comes to the the third riff, for example, in that song, which uh, is. So what me, most people don't notice, I think, which is the kind of interesting point, is that it's got that low note in it. So um, I've seen people kind of try to work it out on E guitars and they're kind of nowhere near because they're, they're missing those root notes that, that add that resonance and, and add that, um, that depth, I think, to the chords. And they, you kind of hear these kind of half chords in there that they've not quite managed to grasp, but I think that's probably why. So, um, so yeah, that one particularly is, is an interesting one. You know. When it comes to Winnie Filler songs as well, I think which Dan found quite annoying when he joined the band, is that, I don't know, through however we've sort of learned to play the guitar, or I've learned to play the guitar, and, and me and Nick have kind of developed the songs over the years until Dan joined, then we, we play very much in this kind of rhythmic style where we sort of incorporate bits of the lead guitar into the rhythm section as well. And then we also have lead guitar on top of that. So. If you think about some of our riffs, then um, like that one, the End Times of Victory, for example, you know, you, you might sort of break that down if you were another band and kind of have, you know. But we've got kind of got the sort of the rhythm part and the lead part in there as well, so it's going. And then on top of that, at the later points, there there is a kind of lead guitar that comes in as well at the top of at the top and kind of around it, and the sort of drums move around too. So I think that's a really um, a really fundamental part of the for the sound that a lot of black metal bands don't have. You know, a lot of black metal bands tune to E standard or maybe even something like C, but not a lot tend to tune as low as A or B. So I think that's that's um, that's a point people kind of would probably be interested in. Um, in terms of things like kind of songwriting and techniques and things like that, and that's quite a personal thing. And you know, you just sort of learn how to play the guitar, how you learn to play the guitar, and uh, and the songs that kind of come out, just the songs that come out. I, I I don't think we've ever kind of gone into it thinking, oh, we want this song to sound like such a band, or we um, you know we're, we're desperate to kind of try and bring this certain technique into it. You know, we've kind of come up from from playing guitar the way we write and. Um, and it's just kind of evolved naturally, really. So I think some of those styles around the tuning and around the incorporation of the kind of low resonant notes, and also, I guess, using a lot of the open strings as well, I think that adds a lot of atmosphere as well. So in songs like Mantor, for example, which which is the very first minute for the song we ever wrote, and is the first song on our album, The Ghost of Heritage, you know, we use quite a lot of the open strings to kind of give this ringing sound, um, but then kind of moving the root notes around so that you get this this strange kind of washiness against the essentially quite sort of standard chord shape. So once the kind of punky intros happened on, on Mantor and then you get into the um, sort of the main kind of flowing riff, you know, we use a lot of open strings and I think that's kind of indicative of quite a lot of Winterfellas material that we, um, 
we would sort of do that kind of thing. So we, we sort of use the open strings where we can and we use kind of gaps between strings or like droning notes in some, some riffs as well. So in terms of the open strings, you think a riff like Mantor, um, once it's kind of, as I say, once it's got past the punky section, you get this kind of, the sort of uh, the ring across all the notes. So it starts on what, on what a normal tune guitar would be, the, the kind of E power chord. So you've got the kind of held down and then you play the open two strings and then that, that sort of shape kind of moves down. So you get this kind of that's that kind of atmosphere building thing and so yeah we use the open strings quite a lot and then also we use um, a droning note quite a lot which I think lots of people miss when they're trying to work out our stuff again as well um, so I'm trying to think of a good example so for example there's the, um, the solitary one waits for grace or the wayfarer part one uh, it's kind of it's more generally known to us so the, the first wayfarer song which is um, the sort of opening track on the the mercy sphere album that uses the droning, um, the droning A note and kind of works the riff around that. So you get this kind of. That kind of thing. So it's got that underlying under whatever you're doing and then there's another riff in that which breaks down right in the middle of it which is kind of so we've always kind of used those joining notes as well so I think understanding those things, you know, the kind of the, the B standard or the drop A tuning, the, the use of the kind of open strings, um, the use of the droning note, and then that on some songs, kind of these sort of inverted chords. I mean, not being kind of a kind of classically trained musician or anything, you know, we, we, we're not kind of au fait with all the kind of chord names or whatever, but rather than kind of playing standard power chords like, you know, you get these kind of inverted ones which sort of start on the same root note um, and you can kind of work sort of some, some magic around the fingers, you know, moving things around underneath them. So a song like Valley Thick with Oaks, for example, it's got these kind of inverted chords that look like this, so they're like... So you still kind of have the root note of, of a normal kind of power chord sequence, but you've got this kind of... The kind of the first finger and the, the little finger kind of moving around, like stretching out or kind of coming closer, depending on where the, the kind of the inversion of the chord works. So I hope that answers some of the questions that you guys have had. Um, my intention as well, on the back of some of the kind of feedback that's come in is to do a few playthrough tracks to show you guys how to play a whole song. So overwhelmingly, um, because I referenced it earlier, overwhelmingly the track and Signs of Victory came up, uh, came up as the one that most people wanted to see um, and learn how to play. And, and equally so did the song Reckoning Dawn, which is the sort of single from my new album. So I'm gonna try over the next couple of days to do um, some, some playthrough videos of those and show you how to do the rhythm part to show you how to do the lead part and hopefully through some kind of film wizardry be able to cut that together so i'm hoping that um answers a few questions you know if you guys have got further questions kind of leave them in the comments or you know email the instagram page or the facebook page and I'm kind of happy to answer those really you know we're all stuck here in this 
crazy post-apocalyptic world these days. So um, what else is there to do? Cheers, guys. Much appreciated.